name is Minister Barton Aaron Porter, and today we're going to go into our Father's Word for another exciting Bible study. Now, I'm going to be using the good old King James Version of the Holy Bible, as I always do. So I encourage you to get your Bibles out and to study along with me. Let's approach our Heavenly Father's throne with a word of prayer before we get into this video. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we come with bowed heads and humble hearts, confessing our many sins, Lord, asking that you forgive us, wash us in the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the Savior of the world. We put all our hope and trust in that precious blood he shed for us at Calvary, Lord. And we ask right now, Almighty God, that you fill us with your precious Holy Spirit as we go into your word, the Holy Bible. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we thank you, Almighty God, for hearing our prayer. Amen. This morning, the good Lord woke me up and started me on my way. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Almighty God, Jehovah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And you should always thank God if you see another day because we're living in the last days and perilous times have come. There's danger lurking around every corner and you and I could die any day. All right? I was on my phone and I saw another shooting took place in March. I believe it was in March. And, you know, I don't keep up with the news because it's depressing. A lot of bad stuff happening. I can care less. But when the Lord brings it to me, it's usually because he wants me to talk about it. So today we're going to talk about God's protection in troubled times. Now, the first news clip I want to show you is about this young man whose name was Brandon Hole, H-O-L-E. He was 19 years old. And this little disturbed individual went up to FedEx and killed eight people before he killed himself. So I want you to check that out right now. Another mass shooting in America. Eight people shot dead at a FedEx facility in Indianapolis Thursday night. And now authorities have identified the gunmen. Police say 19-year-old Brandon Hull was a former employee, but investigators are still searching for a motive. They say Hull started firing randomly, first in the parking lot and then inside the facility. President Biden ordered flags lowered to half staff to honor the victims, pointing out that it has only been two weeks since he last gave that order. In a statement, the president called gun violence a, quote, epidemic in America and urged Congress to act. He also repeated his calls for new gun violence prevention legislation, including universal background checks and a ban on, quote, weapons of war. CBS News correspondent Nikki Batiste is in Indianapolis and has the latest on the investigation. First responders raced to the chaotic scene, finding the wounded and the witnesses running for cover. They have an active shooter currently at FedEx. Police say a man armed with a rifle got out of his car, shooting people outside this FedEx facility. There was no confrontation uh, with anyone that was there. There was no disturbance. There was no argument. He just appeared to randomly start shooting. The massacre lasting just minutes, the gunman killing four people in the parking lot. Then going inside the building, he killed four more before taking his own life. The suspect took his life very shortly before officers actually entered the facility. Did not last very long. Police say the suspect has been identified as 19-year-old Brandon Scott Hole, a former FedEx employee. The FBI is searching his home for clues, but there is still no motive. The teen was detained in March of last year and a shotgun taken away after Hole's mother reported her son might try to die by suicide by cop. So you see in that news clip that this young man who killed himself after killing eight others was a person who had some issues because he had some run-ins with the cops before his own mother said that she believed that he was in danger of committing suicide by cop. They had taken a shotgun from him. And the tragedy is that after that, those things transpired and those things being on the police records, he was still able to go and buy two assault rifles. 
And so then you see our new president, Joe Biden, giving a speech, you know, like all presidents do after some mass shooting takes place. We got to change the gun laws. Yeah, we need stricter laws. Yeah, yeah. And nothing ever changes. It's really pathetic. So a person sitting out here watching that stuff on the news, if they don't have a relationship with God, could become very upset about this and even afraid for their life and fearful for their loved ones. Well, the Bible said it would be this way in the last days. That's why you need to develop a relationship with God based on his word, his truth. Learn what God said the situation would be thousands of years in advance. That's the acid test of the Bible. It's the only prophetic book that predicts things thousands of years before they happen. And the Lord described how things would be, the mindsets and attitudes of people in these last days. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, the apostle Paul being guided by the Holy Spirit wrote these words. He says, this know also that in the last days, that means the last days before Jesus Christ returns to establish his kingdom on this earth. Okay? This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Perilous means dangerous times. Then he says in verse 2, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, verse 3, without natural affection. That's without natural feelings. You know, like this little demon-possessed man went up there and just killed those people, killed eight people. Now, they still don't know what his motivation was for doing it, if he even had one. But he had no natural affections, just like God said people would be. Truce, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent. That means they have no self-control. Fierce, despisers of those that are good, verse 4, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, uh, verse 5, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away. So we see people with all these kinds of mindsets in these last days just like the Bible said it would be. And that's why perilous times have come. You and I could be anywhere at any given time, just minding our own business, and some demon-possessed psychopath could pull out a gun and blow us away. That's right. So that's why you need to know who God is, because God can protect you. Oh, yes, he can. Now, I would like to tell you that things are going to get better, but they're not going to get better. They're going to get a lot worse and then Jesus is going to come. So before we finally get to see peace on this planet, the worst time of all is coming. It's called the Great Tribulation. It's going to be so bad that if the Lord didn't cut those days short, nobody would make it. That's why Jesus said in Matthew 24, 21, and 22, he says, For then shall be great tribulation." such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. 22, Matthew 24, 22. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, the elect are God's favorite, his chosen people, those days shall be shortened. So the mass shootings is something that's been going on, and they're going to continue to go on, and even worse things are coming. So I want you to look at this clip about the Austin, Texas shooting involving a man named Stephen Broderick. They caught him now. They got him. But I just want you to check that out now. So go ahead and check it out. At least three people were killed on Sunday in a shooting at an Austin, Texas apartment complex in what was the second shooting in the United States in one day involving multiple victims. Austin Police Department Acting Police Chief Joseph Chacon said a manhunt is still underway for the suspect. Our suspect um, at this point 
We think we know who it is. He is tentatively identified as Stephen Nicholas Broderick. He's a black male, 41 years of age. He's described as being five foot seven with an average build. He's wearing a gray hoodie, uh, sunglasses, and a baseball cap. The shooting occurred near a popular shopping area in the northwest part of the city, startling local residents. I'm a little worried just because, you know, we know a lot of our neighbors and our dogs were here and everything, but, and, you know, I guess it's our, our neighborhood, so that's really scary. Officials noted that while the suspect is still at large, the shooting appears to be a domestic isolated incident and there appears to be no risk to the general public. 1,200 miles away, another shooting rang out early on Sunday morning when a gunman opened fire at a bar in Kenosha County, Wisconsin, killing three. The violence comes as Americans are already on edge after a spate of deadly mass shootings in the United States over the past month. So you see, like I said, another deceived individual gets his gun out and goes out and kills three people and then goes on the run. And this was a black man. The first guy was a young white man. So it doesn't have to do anything with race. The devil will deceive and use anybody who he can to do his evil bidding. So this sort of thing is going on all over the world. And Jesus said it would be that way. In Matthew 24, verse 12, he says, and because iniquity, that's lawlessness, okay, shall abound, that means to increase, the love of many shall wax cold or become cold. Because of the type of senseless killing is running rampant in the world, people are becoming desensitized to this sort of thing, okay? And then the devil uses chemistry to train people to not care when people get killed through the movies and things that we watch. Every movie is about violence and killing and revenge and all this stuff. And it does have an effect on your mind. And so when you see the real thing on the news over and over and over and over again, if you're not careful, you can become desensitized to it. And you know, well, that's just the way it is. Oh, well, yeah, that's your attitude until it happens to you or someone you love. So you should never take that attitude. But this Bible study is about God's protection in troubled times. That's why you and I need Jesus. Another reason we need him. We need him for salvation. Because without Jesus, you're going to die and you're going to have to answer for every sin you ever committed. And you're going to end up being judged for all the things you've done and end up going into the lake of fire. So we need him mostly or mainly for that reason. But Christ can protect you even now. The children of God become part of a protected group. That's right. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, 33, it says the curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked. That's right. The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked, but he blesseth this habitation of the just. So there's a blessing that comes from being a child of God. And God assigns angels to protect his own. Psalms 34 verse 7 and 8 says, The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him. In other words, God has a guardian angel that just stays with the believers 24-7. All right? The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him, that revere God, that respect him, and delivereth them. Verse 8 says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. So this is also an appeal to those non-believers out there. God is saying, come, join up with me, okay? Because that's where you should be anyway. And you will see just how good I am. That's right. So that's why the Lord put it upon my heart to do this Bible study. He says in Psalms 91 verse 7, A thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh or near thee. God can protect you right in the midst 
of all the turmoil. And this is something you and I need, especially in these last days. Now, the next clip I want to show is of a young man whose name was Adam Toledo. And he was out with an older man who was in his 20s. An older man was shooting a gun. The police were called. They captured the 20-something-year-old. And Adam was running down the alley. And a cop was chasing him, telling him, stop, stop. And Adam threw the gun down and stopped and turned around and the cop shot him. The mayor calls for calm after the city today released that body cam video showing an officer shooting and killing a 13-year-old boy. The teen's, teen's name is Adam Toledo, a seventh grader. The video is hard to watch. It is one of 17 body cam videos released. We've combed through all of them and we'll walk you through what they appear to show. On March the 29th, cops say they responded to reports of shots fired and found two males on scene. One, an adult, 21-year-old Reuben Roman, who police say had fired the shots. One officer tackled and arrested him. The other was 13-year-old Adam, who cops say had a gun in his hand and was running away. Another officer chased him in an alleyway, and that's where the video we're about to show picks up. Again, the warning. It's upsetting to watch. Please stop! Stop! Right now! Hey, show me your head! Stop it! Stop it! Goes on to show the officer immediately radioed for help, trying to tend to that wounded teenager, eventually performing chest compressions, trying and failing to revive him. You could hear the officer right before ye shooting Adam yell, drop it, drop it. But a surveillance video from a different angle appears to show Adam had thrown the gun away. Here's Adam running down the alleyway in the distance there. The cop follows. Then Adam stops at that break right there in the fence. And if you look closely, it appears he throws something behind the fence. Here, look again from a different angle. His arm reaches out slightly right before he turns to face the officer. Police later found the gun a few feet from Adam's body. There it is in the spotlight right behind the fence. So you see in that clip, he turned around, he had his hands up, police shot it. If I was the one who had to decide the cop's fate, I would just fire him off the job. I wouldn't try to persecute him and put him in jail because even though we see what the uh, cam recorder caught, until you're actually in the situation, there's just certain things you don't know. Maybe the cop really didn't see that he had dropped the gun. Maybe. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. As far as the boy is concerned, it's, trage it's a tragedy that he's dead, but he shouldn't have been out there. So we got to talk about his responsibility. We got to talk about his upbringing. All of that has to factor in because the Bible teaches us to stay out of uh, situations like that, to be law-abiding citizens, not hanging out with people who shoot guns for fun at night, and then when the police come, you want to act surprised and try to run. No. So we got to look at all of it. I'm not trying to be desensitive toward the child's death, the young man's death, but we got to take responsibility for our actions, and the Lord will teach you what's right. That's why you need him. And so me and my little wife was talking about gun violence and we were saying how the president said, well, we need to make more tougher laws and do background checks. That will never work because you might have a person after they did a background check on him. He was he came out good, but he may go crazy at some point. Now he got his gun. What are you going to do about that? Then we say, well, in some states and countries, only people can have guns of police officers and military. It's still not the solution because they go off sometime and kill people. Then we say no guns at all. That would work. That would stop people from being killed by guns anyway. But that ain't never going to happen. You know, we, we are realists. We know there's too much money involved in the gun industry and the people who are profiting off of these weapons of destruction, they're never going to go for that. No way. So what's the real solution? The real solution is to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you do, you become part of his family and you become part of a protected class. 
And even if it's his will that you are to die at the hands of some crazy person with a gun, as soon as you die, you're going to heaven. That's right. And as far as the solution to the problem in the world, this is going to continue until Jesus comes back and sets up his kingdom on this earth. That's the only time the world is going to know peace. So I want to end this little Bible study with what was promised us in Isaiah chapter 9. Uh, verse 6 says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. 7. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Notice verse 7 says, of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. When the Lord sends Christ to establish his kingdom on this earth, that's the only time we're going to have peace. And after Jesus' thousand-year reign, the final generation is going to be tested. And then after that judgment, that final judgment, this earth is going to be renovated. It's going to be burnt up, purified of all iniquity. Brand new earth is going to be made. And then the Father, Almighty God, Yah, Yehovah, is going to come down in that holy, majestic city of New Jerusalem to take up its permanent resting place on the earth made new and he's going to dwell with us and his son forever. Revelation chapter 21 verse 3 says, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle, that means tent, of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. Verse 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. The former things are passed away. So my brothers and sisters in Christ. You are part of a protected family when you became a child of God. And that does not mean that it may not be God's will that you leave this world through some violent act. Because so, you can, Christians get killed too. But you know if you die for the Lord, die being a Christian, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So I say to any people that God lead to this video who have not accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, that you need to do it while you have time. Today is the day of salvation. If you have heard, if you have heard his voice today, you need to come to the Lord while you can. If this particular Bible study has been a blessing to you, and you want to bless me with a love gift of any amount, this is how you can do that. I encourage you to go to paypal.com and set up a free PayPal account. And then you can also download the PayPal app. It's free. And if you choose to do it that way, then you would go use this code to send me your love gift. PayPal.me slash Barton Porter. You can also download the free cash app, which is the one I prefer. And if you choose to bless me using cash app, my uh, code is cash.app slash dollar sign Barton1014. And then there are people who prefer Zelly. For Zelly, all you need is my name, Barton Porter, and my phone number, which is 630-441. Four, five, six, three, and then I have videos that I put on Patreon. Some people prefer to give their money through Patreon, 
So if you're going to do it that way, you would go to patreon.com slash Barton underscore Porter. Now, here are non-financial ways you can be a blessing to yours truly in this ministry. I need your prayer, saints. Pray for Minister Porter and pray for this ministry. We all need prayer. And share the Bible study videos. If you're being blessed or encouraged or taught through this ministry, share these Bible study videos with as many people as possible. And if you have any Bible questions or prayer requests, you can call me at 630-441-4563. I live in Illinois, so I'm in the central time zone. Be reasonable about the times you call. Do not call me late at night when people are asleep in the bed. That's just not cool. So use some discretion. But I encourage you to call me. Just don't call me late at night. <laughs> and if you don't have a phone, you can email me your Bible questions or prayer requests or whatever you want to send me. You know, if you just want to share a testimony or share some experience, Send it to Barton Aaron Porter at gmail.com. Now, these last few things are of the utmost importance, saints. I need your support. I need you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you're being blessed through this ministry, take the time to hit the subscribe button. It does not cost you a penny. I've seen a lot of people watch and study with me on a regular basis, but they're not even subscribed to the channel. Hit the subscription button. And underneath the video also, after you hit the subscription button, there's a little bell icon. Click on that bell icon. That bell is the notification icon. I release Bible study videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Every time a video is released, you will get a notification. It will let you know a new video is available. And underneath the video, there's two thumbs, one up, one down. If you like my video, if you like the content, please take the time to hit that thumbs up button. Very important. These are non-financial ways you can help this ministry. And I need your support, saints. So please do that. And last but not least, it just came to my mind. If you really were blessed by a Bible study video, take the time to put something in the comment section. It encourages me to know that my preaching and teaching isn't in vain, and God can use that to encourage somebody else to actually watch the video and see what the Bible has to say about a particular thing. So take the time to put something in the comment section. Now, in closing, these shirts that you see me wear all the time are my own designs. I have an online t-shirt store, and I just recently purchased the domain name. It's godware.store. So please go to godware.store, check out the t-shirts, the hoodies, the women tees, the cups. If you see something you like, buy it because you're getting something that you can use to share the gospel of Jesus Christ everywhere you go, and you're also blessing this ministry as well. So. Until next time, this is Minister Barton Aaron Porter saying, may the good Lord continue to bless you and keep you all the days of your life. God bless you and goodbye.